This is a Subaru Impreza WR XSTI, and it's basically a rally car for the road. And this particular version is owned by my director, Sam, who's behind the camera. And she'll be really annoyed if I don't treat it very well. I do it to press cars, come on. I do it. I want to review it. I'm going to go back and review it. Buying a new car? Head to CarWow to get offers from the UK's top dealers carwow.co.uk, the car buying comparison site. Let me give you a quick history lesson. So Subaru released the Impreza back in 1992 and they took that car rallying. It was famously driven by Colin McRae, who actually won the WRC in 1995 as the youngest ever driver to do so. And I think he's the best rally driver in the world ever. Moving on. They actually made a road version of the rally car and called it the WRX. Then they made a high performance version of the WRX called the WRX STI. And STI stands for not sexually transmitted infection, but instead Subaru Tickmaker International. This is a second generation version of the WRX STI. It came out in 2002 and it actually went through two facelifts. So the first car was known as the Bug Eye because it looked like an angry bug. And a bit later on, they released this version, which was called the Blob Eye because of this blobby bit in its headlight. Then later on still, they released the Hawkeye, which had more angry looking lights. That went out of production in 2007. And we've got the third generation version. Now this was available as a saloon and a hatchback. Then the fourth generation version was available as a saloon. And we're now on the fifth generation version of the Impreza, but there is no WRX STI version anymore because Subaru has gone all boring. It's a shame really, because this car is rather good. In fact, it was a big hit with boy racers back in the noughties. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing my cap this way around. It's actually a Toyota hat, I don't have a Subaru one, but then Toyota does own part of Subaru, so I guess it's fine. One of the main reasons people love this car is because it has a unique engine. It's a two litre flat four turbo in the WRX, produces 225 horsepower. But for the STI model, they did loads of changes to the engine's internals. It's about 80% different. They also fitted it with a larger intercooler as well. The result is that horsepower goes up from 225 horsepower in the WRX to 265 in the STI. Now, if you think, mm, it's not enough. Back in the day, you could pay your dealer about £2,700 and then they'd fit the Pro Drive Performance Pack. So that included different pipes for the intercooler. You also got a free-flowing exhaust and cat. You also got an ECU remap. And as a result, power was all the way up now to 305 horsepower. And torque was over 400 Newton meters. In 2006, with the facelift version, Subaru replaced a two litre for a 2.5 litre, which actually isn't as good. They tend to suffer head gasket problems. So you're gonna be better off with a two litre if you have to one of these cars. This thing is supposed to be able to do 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. The only thing is though, is that it's a manual. And so in order to get close to that time, I'm gonna to have to rev it up, sidestep the clutch, and just hope the transmission doesn't explode. Now, if it does, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble with Sam. So I'm actually gonna take it a bit easy. I'm not gonna sidestep the clutch. Here we go. Let's launch it kind of carefully. Sorry, Sam. Here we go, can I do it? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Not too bad. Oh, you have to wait for it to spoil up on the turbo. Oh, once you've got the boost on, this thing flies. <laughs> yeah, you have to wait for the turbo to really kick in. It's around 3000 RPM and then it's on song and it goes. That feels fast. That feels fruity. While the normal WRX had basic Subaru sports brakes, the STI version got rated Brembo's. So you've got four piston calipers at the front, two piston calipers at the rear, you've got 326 millimeter discs here at the front and at the back they're 316 millimeters. I want to test the brakes for myself. So to do that, I'm going to do a full emergency stop from 70 miles an hour, see how long it takes the car to stop. I've laid down a cone there and what I'm gonna do is see if this car can break before the end cone, which is actually 50 meters away. Let's see if it can break from 70 miles an hour in under 50 meters, which it should be able to do, hopefully. We'll find out. Let's do it. Oh gosh. Here we go, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. Come on. That did really well. That really, really did stop well. For an old car, I thought it'd be rubbish at braking, but it actually did a really good job with loads of feel through that pedal. I'm impressed. 
The Impreza WRX had load stiffened suspension over the standard car, but the STI had improved suspension still. So it got higher quality dampers, stiffer springs, and fatter anti-roll bars at the front and at the back. The STI also had rated drive shafts and wheel hubs over the normal WRX. And in 2004, which is what this car is, they actually widened the rear track. And as a result, the car is known as the wide track, obviously. This car has a proper rally bred all wheel drive system. So as well as a central differential, you have one at the front and one at the rear as well. Now STI versions went one better than the WRX by having an adjustable central differential. So you could actually adjust the amount of torque going from the front to the back and it could send a maximum of 63% of the power to the rear wheels or a minimum of 37 to the front. Normally it'd just be 50-50. If you want to, you can actually adjust it by putting it into manual mode and then you can alter the severity of the locking of the central diff so the more you have it forward, the more it's 50-50, the more you have it back, the more it can be rear drive biased. All these cars, you'll probably notice, manual. No flappy paddles here, my friend. Now the STI version has a six speed manual, whereas the WRX only got a five speed manual. I drove one of these back in 2004 when they first came out, and I haven't driven one since, so this is gonna be fun. Is it as good as I remembered? Because I was blown away with how it just held and gripped onto the road. No driving aids apart from that diff and the sensors figuring out what's going on. Whoa. <laughs> well, it does feel a little bit naughty. Now, I think I can go around here faster in a modern hot hatch. Something like an A45 AMG will be faster around here. Pedals are in a nice place for heel and towing. <laughs> you can tell it's a, a rally car. Oh, it really comes around on you when you lift off the throttle and then you just plant your right foot, a bit of counter steering and it pulls itself straight. Oh, let's heel and toe, that's right. It's so easy to do. This is wicked. Oh, I can feel exactly what's going on. Whoa. It does feel playful and fun. And that's the thing about it compared to a modern car. You do feel absolutely everything through the steering, through your bum. There's just more feel and communication through everything you touch from that gear shifter, which is just so mechanical and really nice. It's quite a short throw and it's very, very chunky feeling. Could get on your nerves after a while, but when you're on it and you're having fun in the car, it feels great. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> I've got a feeling I want one. The most recognisable feature about the front end of this car is of course this huge bonnet scoop to feed air into the intercooler and it's actually slightly larger on the STI than the normal WRX. The rest of the front is largely the same apart from some STI badging here and here. Though this one being the ProDrive Performance Pack gets a little front apron here and apparently this is part of the ProDrive Performance Pack as well, the different meshings. Although it does sort of look quite aftermarket. Sam says that this is standard though so we just gotta trust them if you know different let us know in the comments below the side profile of this car is all about those bulging wheel arches that really is very rally like the car gets 17 inch alloy wheels as standard you get them in the gold color and that works really well with the blue you've also got some big side skirts as well to make it look like the car's hugging the road and look an upgrade from the pro drive performance pack yet again these rally like mud flaps like in those now at the very back of the car, because this is the wide track, you get this extra bit of plastic spat almost to like fill in the fact that this car is wider over its rear haunches. It does look sort of stuck on, though that's because it pretty much just is. The rear of this car is dominated by this massive wing, which also doubles as a really handy picnic table. If it's sunny and you're at a car meet, obviously you've got sporty rear bumper so they're deeper than on the normal Impreza and a big exhaust which of course is real look I'll prove it with a car wow twiglet of truth look at that that's massive obviously a lot of people who bought these cars would actually upgrade the exhaust make them huge but this one is completely standard and if you fancy something like this you should check out these guys look Hearst cars in Bedford here on the inside what you've got is a Subaru from the mid noughties so it does all feel pretty cheap and plasticky to be fair this on the dash is sort of soft touchy so it's here it's what you expect it's all very basic 
You do have nice clear dials though, very easy to see with a central rev counter. Being the STI, you get STI badging there as well. You get the STI sporty steering wheel with the STI logo on there. You get STI floor mats. And STI, I've noticed, is in pink. It's pink on the seats as well. I do like this blue suede fakey sweat, I don't know what it is, but it certainly holds you in place when you're moving around. I like the way that the blue's repeated here on the door cards as well. I'm not so keen on this, look, no door bins really. We just have to use these crappy little cup holders to hold your drink. Gear selector, that is sporty and leathery and you do have some STI badging there as well. I think that's fake aluminium though. What's not fake is the aluminium on the pedals. They're quite nice. It's all right. It does feel suitably sporty enough. Here in the back, it's actually pretty decent in terms of space. Look, knee room's all right, headroom's okay. I like the fact that they've continued the sporty feeling. So you do get the blue inserts here and on the seats, though it's a different material than in the front. That's like this nice suede. This is some weird felt. Also, I don't know how I feel about the blue carpet. Can't quite decide if I like it or not. What I don't like though is this, there are no door bins. I wonder if there's some cup holders here in the central armrest. No. And actually, the material of this is so coarse, I think I've just taken off a layer of skin. So, check this out though, look, look at this! Some through loading! Oh my god! How practical is that? Brilliant if you're going skiing, and this is a great car to take skiing as well, because you'll be able to slide it around all over the snow. Annoyingly though, there's no air vents, so you might get quite cold in the back. You'd, you'd want something to blow warm air over you, I think. Why didn't they fit those? Also, I've noticed this, there are no headrests. Sorry, head restraints in the back. So, if you're involved in a rear end collision, you're gonna get some serious whiplash. You can tell that Subaru have tried to keep the cost down on this car by cheaping out in certain areas. The boot on this car is just about all right. So, you can fit quite a bit of stuff in it, as you can see here. Now, the capacity is actually 395 litres, which is a bit less than that of a BMW 3 Series E46. In fact, if you want to see me drag race an E46 M3, click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch the video. The other thing that I find quite funny about this car is, look, there is no plastic cladding here on the boot, it's just bare metal. And there's these exposed bolts, which <laughs> screw that wing on. That's just shocking. Back in 2004, this car would have cost about £23,000. they would have to add on that £2,700 for the Pro Drive Performance Pack, taking you to around £26,000. So how much money has it lost in the past 16 years? This one's done 30,000 miles. Can you guess? So, Sam, how much did you pay for this? 15. Well, you paid 15 grand for an old Impreza. That's like the same price I paid for my Porsche 996. Still, these things are actually holding their value. If you can find a mint one like this that's unmolested, and it's a UK version as well, it's about the right money. So if you want a fun car that isn't gonna lose much cash, try and find yourself one of these. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. The decals on the car are mainly stickers, which can peel off. Also, the red of this STI it's slightly different to the one here, which is more pink, like on the inside. It's like Subaru couldn't quite manage to decide which colour exactly to do them. Even though you've got remote central locking, you can't open the boot without using the key. Yeah, great. Also, if you've just popped out of the car to get something out of the boot, then you realise that you need the key, then you have to come back and yes, well, you don't have to grab the key again, you can open it with this latch here, but then you have to obviously go back to the boot and you're there backwards and forwards all day, you know, you never get on with your journey. The switch for the headlamps is here on the indicator stalk, and the switch itself is quite loose. The problem is that if you're driving around at night with your lights on and you suddenly turn right a bit too enthusiastically and you indicate like that, you can accidentally rotate the switch around to the off position, and then you're driving around with your lights off without even realizing and because this car looks like a drug dealer's car, that gives the police a reason to pull you over. They may find you spliffs. The UK version of this car just isn't as good as the equivalent top of the range Japanese versions. Those got better turbos fitted to them, 
They had water injection for the engine. They had a high red line at 8,000 RPM rather than the 7,000 for this car. They put out up to 330 horsepower as standard. They had a mechanical helical central differential rather than the viscous coupling central differential of this car. They also got extra seam welding to make the bodies stiffer. Why did we get that in the UK? Gits. Sometimes when you're maneuvering at low speeds with full steering lock on, you get a clunking sound from the differential, which, while probably fine, doesn't sound very nice. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's a car wow, five core cool features. If you think your intercooler is getting a little bit too warm and therefore not doing its job properly, then if you press this button here, it'll actually spray water onto the intercooler to cool it down. UK versions of the STI have uneven exhaust headers, and as a result, the exhaust note has this very characteristic burbling sound to it. Have a listen. Interestingly, the Japanese cars have even exhaust headers, so they don't make that noise at all. They're much more boring to listen to. This 2-litre turbo is really tunable. A simple stage one will give you 350 horsepower, no problem at all. Change some engine internals, then you can get up to 600 horsepower and it'll run reliably. Though if you strengthen the block, you can then take them all the way up to 800 horsepower. This may be a cheap Japanese saloon car, but check this out, look. It has frameless windows, which is the kind of thing you'd expect on more expensive coupes from Germany. In fact, my Porsche 911 996 has frameless windows, and that was well over 50 grand back in the day. What a bargain. This may be a four-wheel drive, but it's a rally-bred four-wheel drive, and rally cars like to go sideways. Ah! <laughs> awesome! Thing is, though, what's this car like? to drive as a daily. <laughs> Funniest thing is just that scoop on the bonnet. It's like gobbling up the road, so you can never forget what kind of a vehicle you're in. And then you look out the back window and yeah, there's that huge wing. You are very self-conscious in it. You do look like a boy racer. There is no two ways about it. And this interior trim just doesn't let you forget of what this car's heritage is. <laughs> but if you want to switch off, can you just coast about in it? Well. Thankfully, this one has a six-speed gearbox, so it's not too bad on the motorway. I'm just gonna get up to 70. I'm gonna have to change down again because I'm out of the, the turbo zone. So there we go, now we've got some boost. We're at 70 now, cruising along. I can hear a few rattles from behind the dash and a lot of tire noise. Can you hear that? But I could just about live with that. And what most Subaru and Pretz owners will do anyway is just turn up the stereo. In fact, they'll have an aftermarket stereo that's probably so loud it can drown out an earthquake. It's all right. It's not too bad at all. And the seats are quite comfy. The air conditioning works, thankfully. But yeah, once again, I need to overtake, but I haven't got boost, so put my foot down. Come on, build, 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 build. Come on, get there. Now we're getting there. We're getting some turbo action and it's starting to go. So you are gonna to have to change down gears a few times if you need to overtake someone to get into that turbo zone. So here we go. Oh yes, we've got it on now, and then it flies. <laughs> and it's not too uncomfortable. The suspension is actually fairly compliant, really, for a sporty car. I could live with this every day. Why do they build one like this today? I mean, Subaru and Pretzers, after this, basically, were pretty rubbish. They didn't improve any. I mean, if you had an equivalent of this today, it would be like 500 horsepower and cost about 40 grand, but no. No, they stopped. So then, what's my final verdict on this 2004 Subaru Impreza WRX STI Wide Track Pro Drive Performance Pack? What am I for? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should avoid it because it's crap. I mean, what kind of moron will buy one of these things, eh, Sam? What? <laughs> Sorry, I'm only joking. I loved it. Just go right ahead and buy it. Just go right. Leave me alone, you mentalist. I hope you all enjoyed the video, especially my Alan Partridge reference there at the end. Now, if you'd like to see me review some other older cars, then let me know in the comments below. Also, if you click on the video windows, you can watch some more videos. Click over there to see how much money you can save on a new car through CarWow. 
And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. Thanks for watching.